Hello, this is Johnny Henson, Professor Poole with Bill University out of Phoenix, Arizona. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you uh, about Q-tip maintenance. And the, the thing I, I really want to stress is Q-tips wear out. And so many times I've had students come to my class and their, their Q-tip is, is, you know, just pretty much gone. I mean, there might be a little leather there, but it's, it's, it's way past uh, a good plain tip. So keep an eye on your tip. When your tip starts to get worn out, uh, don't, don't try to get extra time out of it. Just take it to your local pro shop, let them put you a brand new Q-tip on there, and that's gonna help your game because you're not gonna be miscuing. The, uh, I'm gonna kinda uh, demonstrate a few, a few things that I've used over the years. Um, uh, this right here is like a scuffing tool that I've used, and you can use this to kinda round your, your uh, your, your, your tip if, it, you know, if, it, if the contour is not correct. Um, if you notice it, it will make the, the contour of the, uh, of the uh, uh, about the, si the size of a, of a nickel. So if you held a nickel up to your stick, it would be about that same contour. Um, there is uh, things like this where you can use these to shape. Um, they, they, uh, a lot of these come with uh, something, uh, a picker and you can you know pick uh, these these uh, do work uh, the thing you have to be really careful about when you use these is is be careful that you know you don't slip off of the your q-tip it can take a, a little dent out of your q-tip but it can also scratch up your ferrule and uh, wear your ferrule out um, so with that being said uh, th but the, I was told by a, a tipping professional somebody that you know tips uh, cues all the time he said they don't really recommend the, the picking tool for any layered uh, Q-tips. And the reason is, is because the little picks themselves kind of break down the different layers and it causes, you know, the tip to actually wear out quicker, you know. So the thing of it is, he said that uh, I had my, a lot of my cues, my teaching cues re-tipped recently and he recommended that I, I use one of these. And to be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've even owned one of these. and. Uh, so anyway, I, um, how this works is it has some grooves on one side, and what you do is you push and rotate, push and rotate, push and rotate, push and rotate. And what it does, it puts little uh, indentations into your leather that, that, that enable your Q-tip to hold chalk, okay? So basically, that's pretty much all there is to it, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about proper chalking. Let's say that you're playing a game. If you're playing a game, the first thing you need to do as soon as you make a ball, before you even go into your pre-shot routine on your next shot, what I want you to do is get in the habit of, of watching yourself put the chalk on your stick, okay? So what I'm saying is I want you just to, uh, to get in a, in, a, in a habit of just making sure that every part of that Q-tip has a good layer of chalk. A lot of times what will happen is, is we're, we're, we're so st uh, busy studying our next shot, worrying about our next shot, we, we give it one of, those, one, of the, one of these little things. Well, if we didn't get the edge, and there's a little spot on that Q-tip that didn't get any chalk, and you go down and you try to do a draw shot, you're probably going to air mail your, your cue ball, and you're probably going to lose the match, or at least lose that game. And so what you want to do is, is the, the thing is, is, is as you play a lot of games too, you might need to you know, get your scuffing tool out and rescuff your stick because you know, as you play maybe you know, four or five games, you're starting to flatten out different places on your Q-tip, they're not gonna hold chalk. So uh, getting back to the, to the routine, I, I recommend that you actually watch yourself put chalk on by, uh, by just looking at your cue and, and chalking. Then what I want you to do is put, put the chalk upside down on the table, that way this chalk's not being beat off and left all over the table, so you know, it kind of you know, causes chalk to get all over the top of the table. So always just kind of put your, your, uh, your, the chalk part point straight up. And then what I want you to do is, is now that you've chalked, now you put your, cue, your chalk down, now what I want you to do is start looking at your next shot, da 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 da, because you don't have to worry about chalking your stick now. Your stick's already properly chalked, so that's one less thing you have to worry about. So get in the habit of make a ball, chalk your stick, 
put your cue chalk down properly on the table, and now get ready for your next shot. And so chalk, and then start your pre-shot routine, you know, whether it be figuring out what you're gonna do or whatever your pre-shot routine is. But the first thing I want you to do right after you make a ball, before you even start on the next ball, is chalk your cue properly. And if you do that, and, and if, if you need to know any more about proper cue maintenance, uh, as far as um, uh, Q-tips or anything else, I would re highly recommend that you go and you talk to your local pro shop because there's experts in this area. There are experts not only on cues, but cue shafts, uh, uh, replacing ferrules, replacing tips. And there's a whole lot of options out there, a lot more options than I'm gonna have time to talk about in, in, this, in this video. So anyway, I hope this information is helpful to you. Uh, good luck and good shooting.